with Paul, one of my girlfriends, actually, she looked at, oh my God, he's so cute. I'm going to wink at him. And she did. And I go, Stephanie, it's not you winking at him. It's me. <laughs> and he was, yeah, he was really cute, but he almost, like my other friend said, you know, yeah, he looks like a player. Yeah. He's sent me an email, said, uh, you know, thanks for the wink, pretty girl. <laughs> and then two weeks later, we had our, we had our first date and I want to say the rest is history, but it was about a year or so. We, we took our time. We really did took, take our time. We didn't jump into something. We knew that we had an attraction and it grew, what I'm going to say, at an appropriate pace. And now, now it's 11 years later. This is episode number 536 with Silka Schwarzkopf. Finding Love After 50. I am so excited to talk to Soka today. I've been on Second Act TV, which is her baby, her wonderful YouTube channel that has a huge following. And it is my pleasure to have her as my guest for a change. But before I bring her on, I just wanted to welcome you back to Last First Date Radio, where we believe it is never too late to go on your last first date. And if you'd like some support on your journey to lasting love, I wrote a book. It's called Becoming a Woman of Value, How to Thrive in Life and Love. And it's filled with tips and exercises and all kinds of wonderful ways for you to grow your confidence and to play a bigger game and succeed in all areas of life and love. And you can find it on Amazon for Kindle or paperback. This week's tip from the book is step number seven, which is be the love you wish to find in the world. And I truly believe that we often wish for something in a partner that we are not doing ourselves. And so if you are looking for somebody who's charitable, are you charitable? If you're looking for somebody who's really kind, are you always kind? You know, just to look at the areas that you might want to improve in your own self, which will help you to magnetize the person that you want in your life. Before I bring Selka on, I just want to give a shout out to my fabulous Facebook group. It's called Your Last First date. And we are a group of women over 40 who are looking for love, but doing it in a way that is healthy, positive, focused, no victim mindset allowed. We are not here to bash men to talk about how horrible dating is. It's okay to have bad days, but the point is you're here to grow and to learn. And if that's something you would like to do and you're not yet a member, come to your last first date when you're done listening to this episode. And now for my guest, Silka Schwarzkopf is the creator and host of the fabulous Second Act TV. It's a YouTube channel that's focused on life, love, and relationships after 50. She is a seasoned producer, and she took a huge leap of faith right after her 50th birthday. She left an unfulfilled 25-year marriage, and she returned to her hometown in Southern California to produce a lifestyle show inspired by her own her own life, her evolving reality, how to recreate your life after 50. And that's when Second Act TV was born. Welcome to my show, Soka. <laughs> oh, thank you, Sandy. I, I'm so, it's so happy to be here. It's, yeah, you, as you mentioned, you've been on my show many times. Uh, in fact, you were like one of my first guests when I first launched the channel, when I just, oh, but I look back at the episodes, you were wonderful, but like, you know, you look at the quality and <laughs> I had like maybe 500 subscribers there. Now we're coming up on 50,000. So wow. thank you for you know, being such a big support of Second Act TV. <laughs> uh, well, it's such a pleasure to be with you. You're always, yes, great questions. You have wonderful guests and it was fun seeing your progression as we all had to grow from someplace. I mean, I started this podcast on blog talk radio with terrible sound quality. I did it over my phone. It was like I had guests. It was all live. I had guests who didn't show up and then I had to pinch it for a half an hour. I went through a lot of different things. We had people calling in. We had prank callers. It was fun. So now now I get to control it and have guests that I love and they, they come on time. <laughs> so let's get started. Let's first talk about your show, Second Act TV. So why did you decide to create it and help people recreate their lives after 50? 
<laughs> well, like you said uh, in the introduction, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's basically what I went through. I know I'm a producer by trade. I have been for many years and uh, not in uh, like, like marketing stuff, you know, uh, B2B stuff. But I've always, I've, I've loved production. And when I woke up, it was literally right after my 50th birthday. And I'm like, oh my, you know, I'm 50. And is this all there? I mean, I was unhappy. It was a very unhappy marriage. I, as, as I said many times, we had separate bedrooms for 10 years already. It's like, do I really want to live the rest of my life this way? Long story short, I didn't. <laughs> we had a divorce. I won't bore you with all the details, but I started going, I, I decided to move back to California and to my core group of girlfriends, which we, you know, we talked, we had fun like we did in high school and college, but we all would dealing with same issues all of us well except for one was unhappy marriage five of us left three or two two have been remarried and the other two are living together you know big major changes anyway again long story short i i realized that this is so to me it was so interesting hearing all this that i thought you know if 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 we're going through this you know that there's thousands of other women out there and men going through this as well. Although first I was focused on women. And anyway, I had the idea to start actually a television show. I wrote, uh, we did the whole book, it's called a Bible treatment, you know, that'd be pitched to the networks. And at that time, this was like six years ago, seven years ago now, uh, Oprah, Oprah's network owned the senior producer acquisition development manager told me that this is such a great idea. We want to skew younger. <laughs> and I mean, I was, I was just floored. Now that has changed a lot here, especially in the last five years that that has changed a lot, but that's what brought me to YouTube. And then, you know, the YouTube growth and everything else that goes along with that. Cool. So Silka, I know that you found the love again after your divorce. Tell us, tell us your process. How did you get back out there? What did you do? How did you find him? Give us all the details. <laughs> Uh, well, it's kind of funny. It's well, I'm you know, Paul and I are an online dating success story. <laughs> it it you know was ten years ago, but yeah. So what do you do? You know, when you want to find new love, online dating was still then. It was a little you know hush hush, or, or you know you don't want anybody to know you're online. And that's another thing with my girlfriends, you know, I used to, I started dating in, in Dallas and then I changed my profile to California and I went there every two weeks to find, you know, with my move. So when we went there, we had our, our get togethers and then we, we, we talked about it, you know, let's get out the man catalog is what they called it. <laughs> so it, it got to be to where they like, they were just fascinated by how this worked, you know, the men that, that are on there. And well, with Paul, one of my girlfriends, actually, she looked at her, oh, my God, he's so cute. I'm going to wink at him. And she did. And I go, Stephanie, it's not you winking at him. It's me. <laughs> and he was, yeah, he was really cute. But he almost, like my other friend said, you know, yeah, he looks like a player. Yeah. He sent me an email, said, uh, you know, thanks for the wink, pretty girl. <laughs> and then two weeks later, we had our, we had our first date. And... I want to say the rest is history, but it was about a year or so. We, we took our time. We really did took, take our time. We didn't jump into something. We knew that we knew that we had an attraction and that was, it, it grew what I'm going to say in an appropriate pace. And now that was 11 years later. Wow. <laughs> That's a long time. <laughs> um, and it's so interesting that your friend gave him the wink. And <laughs> this happens a lot, by the way, where a friend will be online and the other, the person who's, whose account it is, is like, I'm so done with this. I, I'm closing my account. And the friend will go and they go, look at that cute guy. And that turns out to be her next husband. So, you know, you hear these stories and I love that she took a risk because you may never have because you thought he might be a player. And mm -hmm. So that's an important piece. But the other part about moving slowly, I totally advocate for people moving slowly. There, People are looking for love at first sight and, and I'm going to feel the butterflies and it's all going to happen like in the movies. And that's the movies. And it almost never works out where you have this huge spark and it goes really fast. Sometimes it works, but most of the time it doesn't. So slow and steady is the way to go because... 
especially at this stage in life, I think we know ourselves better. We don't want to put all our eggs in one basket right away and, and just kind of discover about the person because I think, you know, if you've been burnt before and you've fallen too quickly, it's easy to, to fall quickly again and you don't want to keep repeating patterns. I mean, like what made you want to move slowly? What was your motivation? Well, by the time I, I uh, met Paul, which, uh, you know, now it's been about a year since I was separated or so, you know, I dated other guys too, too, that I really liked. And they were very much, you know, they were all in. And I was just, I, I was all in. <laughs> and next thing you know, they were all out. <laughs> it was, you know, when, when you have all this, the love bombing, all you know, at first, you have that chemistry that, Oh, you know, this, this is it. This, I met my new, you know, my new ex-husband <laughs> and it doesn't, it, it generally, that's not a good thing. And I learned that and I wasn't going to do that again, especially with someone, you know, that you, that like online, when you, when you don't know anything about them, you weren't set up through friends or let, let's, let's, let's learn. And he was the same way. Paul, Paul, he may be even slower than me, not because there wasn't a, a mutual interest, just the way he is. And I think that's really been one of the keys to sustaining our relationship. Yeah, I, I totally get the love bombing and and falling for somebody and thinking they're the, your next ex-husband. I'm like that. <laughs> your ex-husband, I said. <laughs> your, your future ex-husband. I mean, I would picture going down the aisle with people I hadn't even met yet. So I was totally into the idea of people and it, they just seemed amazing. And then you'd meet them and it's like, oh, maybe not. Or you date them for a while and you realize they're not who they said they were or you thought they were. So it's very easy to fall for potential and fall for this idea of somebody. Uh, what are some of the other challenges that you faced before you met Paul? Well, I, again, with, with those, those two guys and, and I being, being a producer and, and you know what a producer, what it entails. A lot of times you, you know, you, you make decisions uh, that are so detailed and even down to the second, you plan your day to the second. <laughs> and I kind of took that into my uh, personal life, my dating life. I'd be, you know, especially when I was traveling to California to, to do dates and, and I wanted everything, you know, in place. And, and that scared one of the guys off. So I go, oh my God. <laughs> You know, this is, I was going to be this controlling girlfriend where he, you know, his time was going to be planned. And when I look back at that now, it's absolutely, I was also, I turned into the girl that can run off a guy in 10 days. <laughs> when I saw that movie, I laughed so hard because I did probably half of that stuff that she did on there. It's, uh, do, do, you know, do you know which movie I'm talking I about? I do. I, I love that movie. I don't remember all the things that she did, but yeah, remind me. Well, one of them was that, you know, when she went to his house and it was like, oh, I love this. I had the same thing. And, you know, God, we oh, we're just meant for each other or, the, you know, oh, you know what? And let me get you this and that. And I'll, I'll never forget where I said, oh, my God, we have the same vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> and I really was kind of I, I was amazed because there were so many things that were the same that I thought this was just the universe brought me the right guy. No, no, I was wrong. <laughs> so that stuff to where you, I, I really learned how controlling I actually was and how being, what, what I thought was being helpful, what I thought was, uh, well, yeah, just helpful and kind and, 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 and organized or whatever was really, really perceived as overbearing. And, and I ran, yeah, two guys off like that. I totally get that one too. <laughs> I think that so many women, and I, and I see this, like when I first started doing this work, I remember there was a client who would make these huge meals for men she just met. You know, she'd find out they were from another country and another culture, and she would say, oh, it'd be so nice. I would just love to make him a delicious five-course meal that's Cuban, because he's Cuban, and and they, they, she was like, oh my God, I'm t 
wholly madly in love and, and it, you know, one date. And then she makes him this meal on the second date and he sleeps over and she's like, oh my God, this is it. This is it. And then he never called back yeah. and she was devastated. And I mean, I warned her, I told her to take it slow. I told her, don't, don't overgive, don't overdo. But it's a live and learn thing. I think I remember my son doing this with his girlfriend. He Any free moment she had, he would run over there and he would take her out and he would just be over, over caring, almost like her father, you know, like I'm going to show up and be there for you because other people weren't there for you and I will save you. And hopefully we learn along the way that that's not healthy. It's a really unhealthy, unhealthy relationship, codependent, you know. But as long as you're learning, that's what's important. Let's take a quick break to hear from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Amazon Music Unlimited. You can listen to over 70 million songs and thousands of playlists and stations. Plus, you can now stream your favorite podcasts like Last First Date Radio. You can listen to any song, anytime, anywhere, on any of your devices, your smartphone, your tablet, your PC or Mac, Fire TV, and any Alexa-enabled devices like the Amazon Echo. Get Amazon Music Unlimited for free for 30 days. Just head on over to getamazonmusic.com forward slash last first date to learn more and claim this offer. Soka, I know that you have what's called an LAT, a living apart together relationship. Tell us, tell us how that works and why you decided to do that. Okay, I, w- I wanted to add one other thing to your last question, if I may, sure. about the challenges of what you learned because it was really pretty funny, and then we brought that into the show. Is the whole sex start having sex again? You know what goes into that actually getting naked with the guy, and at that time especially the whole you know, whatever happened to the hair down there, that was a mystery to all of my girlfriends. We'd, we'd been married 20, 30 years. And that was really funny. We had some funny conversations. I don't know if that's still true today, <laughs> but I just vividly remember that that was a huge challenge that I felt, um, you know, or, or awakening or re- revelation, maybe it's the word I'm looking for that uh, I ended up addressing on the show. So so that was fun. But to your next question. No, let's, let's go here first. because. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good topic. <laughs> Sex is scary. It it is, you know, when you how long were you married? 25 years. Yeah, it's a long time. And being with one person and you said for 10 years you weren't even with that person. Sex is, so sex is for 10 years. We we yeah. talk about on the show too because it's quite prevalent. It is. It is and and people don't talk about it. I remember I started asking people some really really personal questions. Towards the end of my marriage, I was really curious what other people's marriages were like and if people had had affairs. And I was just asking people questions and it was amazing to me how many people had cheated on their spouse but stayed, how many how many never had sex, how many people scheduled sex with their spouse because they really didn't want it and their spouse did. So they did it out of kindness to their spouse to keep them happy so they wouldn't ruin their marriage. And I was just looking at how many people are compromising and and really doing things that really didn't work for them. Right. So we come from that and then get divorced. You finally are free to date anybody and do whatever you want. And then it's, oh my God, what is, what is all this stuff happening? (laughs) It's like, and I remember the, the whole pubic hair conversation. (laughs) It was like, what, what is this? Like a landing strip yeah. and I, it was just and a Brazilian and these were things nobody talked about back when so, I was in my 20s right it was it's a whole new world we, we didn't do that back in our 20s <laughs> so it was pretty funny it's like yeah you know, getting a, almost an old topic now but uh it yeah it, at the time it was really funny the other thing that was not so funny uh, that nobody talks about and that I learned about uh, the whole painful sex, vag- you know, vaginal atrophy. Mm. And that is such a huge topic for, for our age group and for men to realize that, be, you know. And so I've done lots of shows on that, talking about that. Uh, so women, I didn't know. I had no idea 
what ma- what uh, vaginal atrophy wasn't that such a thing existed. I didn't even know to ask. And I'm I consider myself an educated woman. I mean, I have yeah. a, master's, a master's degree, but we, they didn't teach us that. <laughs> no, it, it's it really bothers me that gynecologists don't talk to mm-hmm. older women about what to expect yep. and what to do about it. And not only that, but STDs, like nobody ever talk to me about that. That was something I had to learn. And I had to then start teaching that to my, to my clients and giving webinars and having experts on, because we need to know these things that it's not something that just happens to people who are promiscuous. No. Anybody can get an STD. Men are dealing with impotence and, and shame. Women have shame. I mean, there's just so much around these topics that doesn't get talked about enough. So I'm glad that you brought this up. It's very important. I think also, I think that's one of the reasons, uh, I don't know if I said this already, we have like a 50% or more male audience. When I geared this whole channel, the whole show was to be, you know, for women, women talking, listening, um, and I, that just surprised me. But what that shows is that, yeah, men like being the fly on the wall. They want to learn this stuff. They 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 don't know it either because, yeah, we don't talk about it. So that's that's what we try to do. <laughs> No, it is important. I used to write for the Good Men Project. And Mm -hmm. the reason I chose to do that was because there was a male audience and Mm -hmm. I didn't want to only talk to women. It's it's important to to have a niche, you know, and to to be known for something. But I, in the last year, have coached two men Mm -hmm. and I love it. I love not only helping men, but also hearing the perspective of men and helping my women clients Mm -hmm. know that there are men out there who are like this, who are dealing with the same struggles. And I mean, uh, you know, should I dye my hair? are women going to reject me because my hair is white now? Like that's, it's a concern for some men because women dye their hair. Like why wouldn't a man ask that, you know, Mm -hmm. but women would look at a man who dyes their hair and often put that down. So it's, it's just a complicated world out there. And I think it's, it's a brave world to go into, but it's also just finding love again is what everybody really wants deep down is to find connection and to, to have a partner. Right, exactly. So let's let's talk about yours. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get back to that that LAT. Uh, tell us a little bit about what that means and what it means to you in particular. Well, it's a thing now. Apparently, it has been for a few years, but it's getting a lot of traction actually in the media. And it's yeah, LAT living apart together. And what that means is that you're in a committed relationship, uh, you know, you expect to be together forever, but you uh, maintain your own residences. And that's what Paul and I have done. We, we like for eight years, that, that's what we did. We recently bought a place together that we plan on retiring to. Uh, but I guess that that's, that's even more um, um, evidence that, you know, something like this can really work, that you do you're together and maybe you know eventually you will maybe eventually you won't and actually a lot of married couples I don't know a lot how to quantify that but I guess enough to where people are writing about it instead of breaking up or splitting up or divorcing they're they're trying this now now that's a little bit harder than if you go into it you know with love versus from a divorce situation, but the whole the whole idea that you can maintain separate residences and have an absolutely wonderful and committed relationship is is a big thing, especially with uh, you know in our generation. Yeah, you know it's 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 such a I, I love it because a lot of people worry about losing autonomy. That's one of the reasons a lot of people hesitate to even date at this stage in life and to get involved because what if somebody's going to want to move into my house? What if they're going to want to take my property? I worked so hard for this. And so for a lot of people, the idea that they actually have choices Mm -hmm. is really a good thing. And I think also that separation is healthy for relationships, whether you live together or not, it's important to have some space Mm -hmm. and you can create it within a home. You can do that, you know, people had rooms where they would have their own space and that work f- works for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. But I think the, the good thing about dating at this stage in life is that we get to design 
how we want it. It's so different from the one size fits all that I felt we had back in our twenties. I mean, you've dealt with so many different specialists and experts who have talked about so many aspects of dating at this stage. What are some of the other surprising things that you've heard? Surprising, I, I guess, well, not that it's a surprise, but yeah, I mean, like, like you brought it up a minute ago, that men go through, you know, this really not the same thing, but but similar that our insecurities that we had when we uh, when we were younger, we still have them to, you know, to varying degrees, you know, there's a lot, you know, you know, as you age, there's more wisdom, you're bringing wisdom to the table. I didn't feel like I brought any wisdom to the table when I started dating again, uh, because I just, I, I was raised to, to cater to men, you know, I, from a German household, German mother, that, that, that's what her, you know, purpose in life was, is to take care of my father. And even though I objected to that, and I always said, I'm not going to be like my mother, I carried so much of that into my relationships. And it, it frankly ruined them <laughs> on some level. So what I, the reason I bring that up is that we, or at least in my experience, and in the experience of a lot of people I know and a lot of the comments we get, when you when you go back, when you come back out at 50, especially after a long-term relationship, you really start where you left off. And that was that was a bit of a surprise, just how almost juvenile some of the thoughts are. And yeah, how how in some sense, when it comes to romance and relationships and matters of the heart. How I don't know that we become wiser. Some of us, not I'm not talking for everybody, but there's enough out there. That's, I think that's one of the reasons why the channel took off, is because we address that. That yeah, it's like now what? Yeah, it we do date. We sort of freeze in time, mm -hmm. and even if we're not divorced, you know, it's it's wherever we got sort of stuck in our emotional progress line we are dating like usually as an adolescent mm -hmm. in our fifties, you know, we still have the same fears. We have uh, similar ways of communicating. We're being passive. If we were passive, then we're waiting for men to make all the moves. You know, it's something that I've had to learn for myself. And I teach women also is to really look at all of our unconscious biases. We have so many that we carry from childhood, from our home family of origin, from society, from everything. And we don't even realize that we're waiting for people to do things and we don't communicate those things. Yep. So that's so much a part of what I love about dating at this stage in life is that when you do learn these skills, mm -hmm. then you have the maturity and you have the ability and the new skills and tools to be able to connect in a, in a really mature, rich way, which is so much more fulfilling. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally agree. And I think again, with the, going back to the, to the lat at, at first, you know, I, I, I did kind of fall back into my, well, we have to live together. Aren't we, if we love each other, we're not, you know, we're, aren't we going to live together? <laughs> and I know those were conversations that made Paul very uncomfortable, you know, at, on one level, it was, he, you know, his two boys still lived with him. So there were reasons why we wouldn't want to live together, but the way it all fell out, I, I look back now and that's what that's what made our relationship good that we had that distance he also is not the least bit controlling which i've always been with controlling men because i wouldn't be doing this channel if i was with a, a man who you know controlled me and listened to everything i said <laughs> yeah. yeah or 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 maybe i would be uh hindered you know or hold myself back from that so there's, yeah, I, I found a lot of good in it when I actually learned just a few months ago uh, that, lad, wow, this is a thing. And when I did the show on it, I got those comments. Wow, we didn't know this was, was a thing. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, it is. It's a thing. It's definitely a thing. And I think it really has helped a lot of people to figure out what their next steps are because they don't have to be traditional and they don't have to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. We get to decide and design it. Exactly. So, so guys, we come to a close. I would love oh, to know, I know. <laughs> what are your final words of advice for anyone who wants to go on their last first date after 50? 
I, you know, it's not, not anything earth shattering, but is bringing, you know, your best mindset to the table. And I know you're a big advocate of that. That is just the best advice is you have to know that you're ready again. You have to, you know, you don't, don't go date because you're, you're trying to replace someone. And honestly, just bring a good mindset. Expect men, if you're a woman, expect men to be good men. You know, give everybody the benefit of the doubt. You'll know soon enough if there's something wrong, if there's a red flag. But when you when you first do it, have you know, bring the mindset that this is a good thing. This is going to be fun. And yes, I can find love again after 50. I love that. Yeah, I say rule people in until they rule themselves out. <laughs> uh, yes. Well put. You always put things so much better than that. <laughs> no, this was very good. Uh, Selka, this is wonderful. It's so good to hear your story and to hear from your point of view. Is there anything that I didn't ask you or you didn't share, that you always ask me this one, um, that you would like to tell our audience? Well, I, I guess in, you know, in a lot of the stuff that I've said about my relationship, you know, I, I don't mean to imply that, that I didn't have any issues <laughs> or that we, I mean, there, there's always going to be ups and downs in, in relationships. And that's the other thing is go, you know, go with the ups and downs it, take a big breath take, or take a deep breath back. And I think maybe that's, as we age, we, we do that a little bit better is to not overreact because I see that in the comments on our channel a lot, a lot too. So maybe I didn't, don't mean to end on a downer, <laughs> but understand that life is going to throw you challenges and, you know, just know that you can get past it. I mean, that's a positive message because I think a lot of people feel hopeless. Mm -hmm. They feel defeated by every rejection or what they feel is a rejection and they just give up. And so knowing that this is part of the process, take a deep breath, know that most of it is totally not personal mm -hmm. and get back on the saddle and start over because there, there are so many good people out there. Like you said, give people the benefit of the doubt, expect them to be good. There are a lot of wonderful people and we overlook so many wonderful people because they're not what we think they should look like and act like and our type, which is usually the worst thing that we could possibly look for. So Silka, so tell our audience the best way they can find you. Oh, well, the you well, our my website is secondact.tv, not dot com, but dot TV. Uh, that of course links to the YouTube channel. Otherwise, just go to YouTube and uh, you know, put in second act TV. Actually, if you Google, if you just throw in love after 50, dating after 50, relationships after 50, our, our videos are guaranteed to come up and a lot of them are with you. I, that's, and I don't pay for that. So that's, I'm really proud of that. <laughs> wow. That's awesome. And just a reminder to our audience who are listening, second is the number two. Oh, thank two you. ND. Yes. Yes. But probably if you put second act and spell it out, you'll probably find Soka too. That could, because yeah. Try that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I bet you it will come up because you have such a popular channel. And what I love about it also is that there's so much engagement. You mm -hmm. know, you can have a lot of followers, but very little engagement and engagement is everything. And you're so good at answering people and engaging with them and they love you. We love oh. you. <laughs> Well, it's, some of them don't, but a lot of them do. <laughs> right. <laughs> topics that you and I deal with. And, and, and yeah, I think we both offer some good, a good service to people who really need it. Well, I, I appreciate you. And I'm so glad I finally had you on. Thank you so much, Selka. Thank you, Sandy. And thanks everyone for listening today. If you love our show, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. And as always, here's to your last first date. If you are ready to get unstuck, gain new tools, become more empowered, and finally find your last first date, I'd love to talk to you. Fill out an application to be considered for a complimentary half hour love breakthrough session at lastfirstdate.com forward slash application. That's lastfirstdate.com forward slash application. I look forward to talking to you soon.